My name's Greg Mifsud, I'm the National Wild Dog Management Coordinator with the Centre for Invasive Species Solutions. We've been working with landholders to try and stop uh, the impacts of wild dogs and foxes from attacking livestock, sheep, lambs, uh, increase their productivity. We've been integrating and studying wild dogs and foxes and developing best practice control techniques involving trapping, baiting. Yet we still have a lot of uh, trouble convincing landholders in some places to use wild dog and fox baits due to concerns over their working dogs. They're valued tools, valued animals, valued companions, and we've been developing techniques to, to try and reduce those risks. But ultimately, the safest way we could protect your dog is by using a muzzle. So we're here today to talk to a prominent breeder and dog trainer to see just how he goes about getting those dogs used to the muzzles and what he's looking for in a type of muzzle that he thinks is suitable for his dogs to work all day. My name's Joe Spicer. I'm from the Go Get a Kelpie Stud in the Western Districts of Victoria. I've been breeding dogs for, for 25 years and been helping lots of people to train their dogs. We do probably about 15 or more um, working dog clinics a year. I split my time up between training working dogs, breeding pups, doing a little bit of livestock contracting and, and working dog schools. We use muzzles on our working dogs for a range of reasons. Um, sometimes it's um, to ensure that there's no chance of the dogs biting the livestock. But obviously when we're in areas where there may have been baiting recently, then obviously we'll um, just put uh, muzzles on dogs as a matter of course. Foxes and wild dogs are, are a huge problem for um, a lot of livestock producers and, and are costing them a lot of money and, and causing them a lot of personal stress too. So yes, it's a huge issue. So how important do you think it is for growers here to be able to use baits confidently um, with muzzles knowing that their dogs are safe? Yeah, look, look, it's imperative that everyone does their bit and works in a coordinated uh, strategic manner to um, try and keep the population where it's not affecting their livestock. Do these guys see that muzzle and, and get excited? Yeah, look, you'll, you'll see them when you actually put the muzzle um, on the dog, that the dog actually pushes his nose into the muzzle because he knows that okay, if I get the muzzle put on, I'm going to work and I love working. So they actually do associate the, um, the muzzle with something good very quickly. Just like slipping your work boots on in the morning? Yeah, pretty much. It's just part of what you do um, every morning before the dog gets out of the, yep. the pen or off the chain. He gets the muzzle on and, and away he off goes. Yep. I always like to keep the muzzles on top of the pen and that way we know that uh, the dog's safe from the time that it um, gets out of the pen to the time it gets in the pen. It's there, you'll never lose it. It's always there where you need it. I recommend that you put the muzzles on when you're getting the dogs out of the pen. You can see how she doesn't mind having the muzzle put on at all. Um, in fact, just puts her nose into it like so. It's important when you do put the muzzle on that you put the strap through the collar. You can see that uh, the grating's relatively close together so there's it's highly unlikely that your dog would ever get a um, a bait through, through the grating there it's quite lightweight there's plenty of room for the dog to open its mouth and, and to breathe and probably the feature that i look for the most in muzzles is a nice wide pad on the top of the nose and that way you won't get any um, uh, marks or, or wearing of, on top of the nose and you can see how there's very little weight in in these muzzles so um, the dog hardly knows that she's got it on and when you put them back in, in, in their pen, just take it off. So it's really important when I go to a new property that I'm able to put muzzles on my dogs if need be. I just get them used to it in their pen at home. Part of keeping the dog quiet, you always have dogs barking in the pen that, that are annoying you. Whenever they're annoying me and barking, I just come and put a muzzle on them and that keeps them quiet for a while. But also the main reason is that it gets them used to to the muzzle. Every dog is affected by muzzles in different ways. Some have no effect whatsoever, but as long as you spend time getting them used to the muzzle, dogs associate places and different things with um, different behaviours. So like a, a truck dog will quite often know that a muzzle means it's time to unload or load a truck. So definitely there are different responses, but no, I don't see any negative uh, response provided you get the dog used to the muzzle prior to taking it to work. Training's all about 
patterns, creating patterns. So yes, giving your dog a routine where it knows what, what's coming next, basically, that the muzzle means work. You can start the routine of getting your dog used to a muzzle from any age. It doesn't really matter, obviously, that the younger, um, the more quickly the, the dog will accept the muzzle. That can be done very easily by just putting the muzzle on the dog when it's on the motorbike or the back of the ute or when it's in its pen um, for, for a period. It also, a muzzle has a huge advantage in the yards in that it teaches dogs different ways of creating movement with stock. They start barking more when need be, they start positioning themselves better so they, they look for other tools to create movement. So what we've been trying to do today is give people the knowledge about how to go about getting your dog used to that muzzle before you need to bait. To know that the dog's got a muzzle on and is focused on working and can't eat a bait through that muzzle is just the extra confidence required to get people to do baiting on a more regular basis.